um, greetings of the day to all. So um, I welcome you all to uh, another lecture or discussion class or sample problem session, problem solving session of uh, the co NPTEL course Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering being taken by Professor Devi Priyadas. I am Swastik Sharma and I'm a PhD student in IIT Kanpur and I'm the TA for this course. So let's begin. Okay, let's start. So last week we last week we discussed and solved problems pertaining to circuit theorems. So what were these? Uh, these applicable only to linear circuits. So these were superposition theorem. Source transformation. Seven and theorem and Norton's theorem. Okay, today we'll start with uh, uh, one more class of uh, uh, circuit elements, which are energy storage, which store energy. These are called capacitors and inductors. So unlike resistors that you've already that you were studying till now which dissipate uh, energy in the form of uh, heat these store energy um, uh, so these are energy storing elements capacitor stores energy in its electric field we'll see the working i'm just giving you a brief idea and inductors store it in magnetic field right so um uh, okay. That's just huh? Yeah. So let's start with uh, okay. Why? So obviously these are energy storing in nature, but they don't generate energy. They dissipate whatever energy they store. So whatever energy they store, they dissipate those that that energy again. So these are passive because they don't generate. Let's see the working one one by one. Let's start with capacitors. Audible, right? Hmm. Okay, so capacitors, yeah. Uh, so what exactly are capacitors? So capacitors are passive elements, uh, passive energy storing elements. that store energy so how do they do it let's see the uh, construction of capacitors so capacitors are constructed with metallic plates with spacing between them between them filled by a dielectric substance or an insulating material, which is called dielectric. Okay, so let's, so this the insulating material can be, can be air, it can be mica and um, what, ceramic, Etc. And the metallic plates are usually of aluminium foil, but any metallic plate would work. <laughs> so this is
this is how it looks. I'm giving you a window. So two metallic plates being separated by some uh being separated by a space which is filled with um dielectric, right? Now what how exactly um uh uh, and do they store energy? Let's find out the working principle. Let's see. I let's say I have a capacitor which is being excited by some source. It's, it's a DC source, right? Four volt, some source. And there's a switch between them, and at t equals to zero, switch S is closed. So as soon as it is closed, what would happen? A current will start to flow in this direction, right? So it what would it do? Uh, so it will start accumulating positively charged ions on this um, plate. And since the flow of electrons is in the opposite direction of the um, uh, the um, this uh, uh, the way we represent the current flow, it's uh, the negatively charged electrons will accum start accumulating at the uh, other side of the uh, the other plate. Now, due to this, there is. An electric field developed between the plates of capacitors and what happens so the normal electron current doesn't flow directly through the uh, capacitor when we say current flows through a capacitor the uh, it generally means that there is a continuous flow of current but the same electron flow is not there what exactly is there it's called displacement current So due to the electric field, due to the changing electric field, displacement current is what? Current generated due to the changing electric field, right? So inside those plates, there is a development of displacement current, which is equal in magnitude and direction to that of the electron current, right? And hence, a continuous circuit is developed and the current starts to flow. Up until that point where uh, the um, capacitor has stored all of his energy and it's not, not uh, the electric field is not changing anymore. What will happen? The displacement current will stop flowing and the, the capacitor would tend to make the circuit an open circuit, right? Now, let's take this plate. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself in the middle of it and uh, you can discuss. So let's take this plate, right? Now, charge that is on this plate is directly proportional to the voltage difference uh, to the voltage difference between those two plates, right? And this constant of proportionality is um, written by C, which is called capacitance. Like resistance, capacitance also has a physical dependency. Capacitance C is written as epsilon, which is the permittivity of the dielectric material and the area of the cross section of those plates and D, the distance between the two plates. So if I have this, so the area, the displacement, and there is some dielectric with epsilon permittivity, right? So that's how we wrote, uh, we, uh, that's how we uh, usually write um, capacitance, right? Now, um, what else? Okay, so now take a look at this equation. Q equals to CV. Can we write the equation of current? Of course, right? Current is what? DQ by DT. So let's write the equation of current, which would be C. TV by DT, right? Now, uh, if you take a closer look at this um, uh, this uh, equation, you'll see that uh, a capacitor does not uh, sh uh, the uh, the capacitor is uh, um, um, does not uh, uh, so it, it it does not favor abrupt changes in the voltages. Like for example, if I 
write it like this c delta v by delta t right i can write it like this if this delta t tends to be very minimum let's say some 0.000001 right the whole value will be very very high right so if delta t tends to zero our current will tend to infinite hence the uh, capacitor does not um, uh, favor abrupt changes in the uh, in, it, in in its voltage now let's write the equation of uh, this voltage how can it be written like um, i can write it like this right it by c now integrating both sides what do we get we get integration of db's it by c dt from minus infinity let's say to till t at some time t we want right so v can be written as hence uh, as you can see the um, the equation of uh, voltage for a for a capacitor has memory because it depends on the past exper past experienced voltage uh, by the capacitor this memory property is very uh, is, is 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 important for the working of capacitor and uh, for for many applications in which capacitor is used right <clears throat> so i discussed it vt what more is there let's do connections so let's see connections so you're following right nisa are you following okay i hope you're following so let's check the series connection first so uh, we'll go through this theory and then quickly and then we'll discuss some sample questions which are important uh, which uh, will help you in solving the uh, this uh, quiz six right now uh, this week's quiz so um yeah so series connection let's say we have some n capacitances c1 c2 c3 okay. these are being excited by some v voltage right so v can be written as vc1 plus vc2 plus vc3 i mean all of this is already given in the uh, book so we we'll, what we'll do i am showing you this all of this for uh, capacitors and for inductors uh, as you have already watched the video you'll be able to uh, so we won't uh, spend much time on inductors we'll quickly go through uh, how so i want you to see the uh, see how capacitors behave in in a similar way but still in opposite way uh, the inductors will behave like we'll see um, but we won't go into detail so please be patient Mm, will be solving the sample problem soon. Yeah. So how can VC one be written? I've already written it over here. It can be written as minus infinity to T I C one T D T plus one by C two minus infinity to T I C two T D T. Start some I C and right. So, um, uh, Renesa, do you so do you have any problem? So, for series connection, what I'm doing, I'm simply uh, using KVL, and for KVL, we know input voltage is equal to the sum of all the voltages across the uh, capacitors, right? So, you're following, right? Can I receive a yes or a no? Anything? I don't know if you're following or if you're confused. Hmm? 
that's one okay now since it's a series connection the current will be same right the same current is flowing through all the capacitors so yeah yes 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 renaissance so uh since uh there was yeah so i can add all of these capacitances right since the current is same it would be minus infinity to t some i let's say i is flowing okay. right so c equivalent is nothing but 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon c3 so a sorry it's 1 upon c so uh, a series connection of capacitor behaves in the same way as a parallel connection of resistors behaves right and now for parallel connection it would be the opposite so please do the exercise yourself the c equivalent will come out to be c1 plus c2 plus cn do you want to do you want me to show how parallel connection behaves or you uh, you'll uh, see it for yourself by taking the voltage same across all of those capacitors okay now um, what more do we have to discuss hmm. this is all for capacitors now let's discuss inductors so like in capacitors inductors are also energy storing elements and they tend to store energy in their uh, magnetic field so how do we represent an inductor we represent an inductor like this it's a coil wound across a um, let's say there is some I'll try to do justice with it. but yeah so let's say there is some core right so it's wound so it's wound across that core and that's how an inductor is normally uh, uh, you'll see in your questions this inductor is represented like this which uh, uh, since it's a uh, uh, which is like this and it's a uh, Oh, sorry, I didn't. I digressed a bit. So I discussed capacitance in the SI unit for capacitances. Correct. Hmm. Yeah. So normally you'll see uh, inductors being represented like this, and their SI unit is Henry. So uh, there are different ways of representation you will come across. Normally, like this. or like with some core uh, so you like fix in so it outside like this so generally this is an air core and this is an iron core that's the only difference okay now um uh, this is done and discussed what more is there mm. so uh an inductor generally hmm, uh it um the voltage across it is dependent on the um uh, time rate of change of current passing through it now how do how does this come so it comes from uh, the application of um, so you uh, you know you need to know flux linkages and uh, all of that and that's how you'll be able to derive this uh, relation vl is equals to ldi by dt since the instructor hasn't taught this in class 
I won't be going through how uh, LDI by DT, uh, sorry, how DI by DT comes into picture. Mm. So it's usually uh, the uh, voltage across the um, the inductor is dependent on the current uh, rate of change of current through the inductor. So like um, capacitor where we saw it opposes abrupt change in the um, you know, uh, in the voltage here an inductor opposes the abrupt change in current. Right? More is there. Okay, let's um discuss. Hmm. So VL is given by L D I by DT. Now for the same circuit, let's um uh, how is inductor current given by? It's given by one upon L minus infinity to T VL DT. So like a capacitor, uh, an inductor also has memory property, right? Okay, what more is there? Let's get good power. So how is power represented as? Instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current, which can be written as IT into L di by dt, right? So, how can be written as dt is equals to L I T D I T by dt. And what is energy? Energy is dt dt, right? How can we represent it as? comes out to be if we equate um the let's say at t at uh, t less than zero i t was zero and at t equals to t i t is i so it can be written as half l I square. Hmm. So that's how the energy uh, looks for inductors. What more is it? This hmm. Okay, now let's move on to first order circuits. So you, uh, up until now, uh, does anyone have any doubts? Renessa, do you have doubts? This is uh, basic, right? So you've been through the lecture. We are just uh, uh, going through what he taught so that uh, you, uh, you, you, uh, you have revised everything so that we can solve the sample problems with these. So do you have any doubt? Okay. <laughs> No, no doubt. Okay, okay, okay. So let's discuss first order circuits. So what are first order circuits? So uh, in these circuits, uh, uh, usually these are those, uh, those kind of circuits in which Kirchhoff's Application of Kirchhoff's law, application produces first order differential equations. Right? 
so these are those um uh, those kind of uh, the, um um circuits where application of hitchhoff's law results in um first order uh, first order differential equations so we'll discuss two kinds of circuits first rc circuit and rl circuits so we'll discuss these two circuits uh, which have been taught by the um instructor till now so let's dive into rc circuits so what are rc circuits let's let's first do source free circuits so these are those circuits uh, uh, which have a capacitor in connection with the resistor right so let's 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 assume that this capacitor was initially charged right so there is this voltage so uh, let's take this node a and apply uh, kcl so that would give us ICT plus IR is equal to zero, right? What is ICT? So I recently uh, showed you what is ICT. So uh, Renessa, what is ICT? With voltage V in capacitance C, what is ICT? It can be represented as C dV by dt, right? And I is, uh, sorry, the current through resistance is nothing but V by R. Now let's shuffle these equations. So C dV by sorry. so dV by V is equals to minus dT upon RC, right? Can we write it like this? We can, right? So let's integrate both sides. What do we get? So this results in natural log of V, right? So natural log of V. Since it's a, sorry, since it's a, it's it's an in uh, so it's an uh, uh, it's an integral. There will also be one more term since it's not a dependent integral. Integral, it would be ln v. Let's say another constant ln a. Just assume there is some constant after the integral that comes. In the other side, it would be minus e by r c. Now. L and V, uh, so if there are two natural logs in subtraction to each other, how can we write them? We can write them L and V by A. Yeah, V by A. So that means taking exponential both sides, we get V by A is equals to E raised to power minus E by RC which means V is equals to A E minus T by R C. But we still have one question to answer. What exactly is A, right? So at first I told you, let's say um, at T equals to zero, since I told you the capacitor was initially charged, let it be at V naught, right? Since it was charged to V naught at T equals to zero. And now it starts discharging to the re uh, resistors, right? So, so V is what V naught. So let's equate T equals to zero. So V naught is equals to A E minus zero. Therefore, A is V naught, which means the voltage across the capacitor is a decaying, exponentially decaying function of V naught, right? Let's depict it on the graph. So that's how it would look like. So this is V, this is T, right? It will decay to uh, approximately zero. Hmm. Now let's talk about RC. What exactly is RC? So let's say at some 
at t equals to rc, what is the value? It becomes v equals to v naught e raised to power minus one, right? So what is e raised to power minus one? It's zero point three six eight. So we say t equals to rc or t equals to tau, where tau is equals to rc and it's called a time constant. So we say time constant is that t at which capacitors voltage is 36.8% of its original value. So somewhere let's say here will be tau. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, you can equate uh, t equals to 2t, uh, 2 tau, 3 tau, and let's say 5 tau. And you'll see that at 5 tau, v, v is approximately 0, right? So we say at t equals to 5 tau, circuit has reached it. It's steady state. So this is what I'm proposing. So let's quickly check. You don't have to believe me, right? So let's check v naught e raised to power minus 5 tau by tau. Can you quickly quickly tell me what is this value? It would be 0 0.0067 v naught. Like. So we say that it has since it has reached um, uh, uh, reach uh, this particular value, which is approximately zero, right? So we say that it has reached its steady state. So we assume that it uh, fifth time constant, the circuit reaches its steady state. That's what we infer from this um, uh, um, exercise. So let's quickly do the same exercise for RL circuit. Source free again. We'll do the uh, uh, circuits with source in exercise because that's how you'll appreciate because I wanted to discuss time constant. That's why I'm doing source free circuits. Okay. So uh, let's talk about RL circuits. So here, as you can see, here the voltage um, across the, uh, uh, here the uh, voltage across the capacitor started decaying, right? So can you tell me uh, uh, what would happen to uh, inductor? So how do we proceed? So if we want to check what would happen with an RL circuit, what, what exactly are we, um, Going to see. Can you tell me, Renessa? So I already told you. If we have, uh, let's say, um, reached some value of uh, inductor, what happens? It doesn't change its current abruptly, right? Renessa. Hmm. No worries. So uh, let's see. So let's say that our inductor was originally like this and the current was flowing from this side, right? So the same current will flow to the uh, resistor. So let's give the appropriate um, and the, um, direction of voltage polarity of voltage, right? So 
now let's say x it was or originally at some steady state right and originally at i let's say t equal to zero when the switch was closed it was at some i not current just for the sake of understanding so now applying kvl across this loop what will we get vl plus here plus vr is equals to zero right how can we write vl it is nothing but l di by dt Sorry. so let's shuffle it a bit it would become dit by it which is equals to minus it was a minus r by l dt so can you tell me renessa what would be the uh, after integration what would be the value of it Mm -hmm. uh, solve this integration and tell me the value of it uh, and use this to um, uh, because it's an indefinite integral you need to use this to come up with that value of a constant uh, I, I is equal to minus r by i is equal to minus Okay, so okay, let's let's do it. So it would be ln natural log of i t. Let's say it's an indefinite integral. It would come up with some constant minus ln a, right? Which would be minus r by l t. So this would be ln i. The integration is antiderivative, right? So the it will be derivative. So okay. What what? It won't be natural log. Uh, what are you saying? Uh, I didn't quite get you. Instead of putting ln, why don't you put some integrating constant? C1. Why to put a ln? Like, why do you think ln as the integrating constant? Because achha, this constant. Are you talking about LNA? Uh, Nessa, yeah, can you just. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, you can just take a as well. Let's say we take a. It's just to make the um uh, make the expression a bit clearer. So when you put at t equals to zero, and when you try to find a, the answer would come out to uh, you. You'll find it could easily. I mean, instead of going through all of this uh, exercise, let's say I take it just a. So it would be what a minus r by l t, right? So taking exponential both side, it would be e raised to power a minus r by l t, right? So now at t equals to zero, at t equals to zero, i t is what? I not. So let's equate i not e a, right? Okay, just a second. Huh, e a. Now I need the value of a. So how can is what what is a? A will come out to be what? Log i not. Log i right? Log i not. So if you if you take this, uh, so i t e l n i not minus r by l t. So it can be written as e l n i not dot e minus r by l t right? So what is this? This comes out to be i not. So to make the uh, equation easier where well, I was just taking natural log, which is the which is the norm because you have to do extra calculations then, right? So you can simply uh, take it a natural log of a because it's a constant, right? It doesn't matter what value you take. So if you take it to be a natural log of a, you would get to the answer pretty quickly. So without that, also you're getting the same answer, right? Renessa? Did you understand? Yes, I understand. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I mean, to make the calculations a bit easier, I was just taking it to be a natural law. You can also take A. It's just that it will take time. Because it's a constant, you can take anything uh, to make it a bit um, easy to calculate. 
okay so where was i um we discussed source free rc source free rl pc okay um yeah so uh, like uh, we did it for vc let's do it for il2 it would be the same right decaying function of initial current i not right so that's how you represent it as and time constant here time constant is what can you tell me what is the time constant minus r by L. no 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 time constant is l by r only why would it be minus it won't be minus right why are you going in this direction we need to go in this direction Vanessa, did you understand? Sir, I did the integration wrong. I mean, I didn't follow what we were doing. So I did the integration wrong of correcting. Uh, okay, okay. So you don't have to do it. Just uh, focus on what I'm teaching if you want. <laughs> See if uh, you... Okay, you can do, but uh, it will take time. I need to discuss those questions because um, that's what that's what's our aim. Okay, so... Uh, Let's uh, so shall we move forward? Do you have questions? Feel free to discuss, but but just let me know if you don't have any questions so we can move forward. Right, so uh, let's start some sample problems. Uh, Renessa, solve these so that you are you're able to I'm able to know what what exactly. Hmm. So, what's this question? Uh, can you tell me how can we solve this question? Uh, question. Okay. Can you? How can you draw? So, can we draw an equivalent circuit for this? Uh, a bit, uh, bit redefined circuit. A redefined. Sorry. So we need to find the capacitance between R and Y terminal, right? And uh, the capacitors are shorted between uh, uh, between the ground and uh, B point. So let's uh, redefine the circuit. So how can we represent the circuit? Let's say there is this R node, right? It's connected to CC and then Y. What else is it connected to? This is also B point, right? You are not able to see, I guess. So we need to find capacitances between these two points and B is shorted with ground. So this is also B. So between R and B, there are two um, circuits, CS and CC, right? And between Y and B, there are two circuits, CC and CS. So can we draw the circuit like this, Vanessa? Is it fine? So these two are in parallel. These two are in parallel. So how will our circuit look? Our circuit would change to something like CC plus CS, right? And this is some B point. This will also be Right, Renessa? So now, 
sir, I couldn't uh, redraw them. You did it, and then I'm finding the series and parallel combination. Okay, so okay. So this was the circuit, right? D was shorted here with the ground. And between the uh, capacitance between Y and C is right. Uh, so we are just redrawing the circuit. So when we redrew the circuit, we found that uh, there are two resistances between R and B uh, in parallel to each other, which is CC and CS. And the parallel combination is just simply the addition of those two uh, two capacitances, right? We did that. Now we got to uh, we we got this. Um, uh, this circuit and we need to find as we need to find between r and y capacitance between r and y these two the capacitances are in series now right so can you tell me what will be the equivalent capacitance when we'll redraw the circuit what will be the equivalent capacitance the uh, c plus 1 by 16 plus 1 yeah so what would that be cc plus cs by 2 right so 1 by c equivalent is equal to 1 by cc plus cs 1 by c equivalent is equals to 1 by cc plus cs plus 1 by cc plus cs what is this 2 upon cc plus cs therefore c equivalent is nothing but cc plus cs by 2 right So now these two are in parallel. So C equivalent between R, Y is equals to C, C. Since they are in parallel, they'll get add C, C plus C, S by two. Now quickly equate C, C as 10 farads and C, S as six farad. What would be the answer? The answer will be 18 farads, right? Were you able to solve this? Renessa, let me know if you didn't understand. We can go through it again. Okay. Let's go to another question. So it's saying a voltage VT is being applied across a two Henry inductor for T greater than or equal to zero with initial current through it being zero. So that means I T for T less than zero is equal to zero. The current through the inductor for T greater than or equal to zero would be given by easy, right? So we have an inductor which is two Henry's and is being excited by a VT, which is nothing but 15 T square plus two T, right? So the voltage across the inductor is given by 15 T square plus two T. Now, how is VLT represented as? I told you, right? It is L D I Y D T here. It's LDI by DT, right? So let's equate it over here. It would be L DIT by DT, which is equals to 15 T square plus 2T. Now DIT by DT is equals to 15 T square by 2 plus T, since L is 2, Henry. Now, integrating both sides, IT will be given by 0 to, let's say, some T. So, it is 15 
टी स्क्वायर बाय टू प्लस टी डी टी सो इंटीग्रेटिंग इट इट वुड बी फिफ्टीन टी क्यूब बाय टू इंटू थ्री फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी प्लस टी स्क्वायर बाय टू फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी इट वुड कम आउट टू बी सो फाइव टू पॉइंट फाइव टी क्यूब प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टी स्क्वायर बाई टी वेरी इजी राइट बेसिक So it's two point five t cube plus zero point five t square. Hmm. So let's go through. So what are we given? So we are given an RL circuit, and the initial current. So the switch S is closed at t equals to zero. Okay, and uh, the initial current through the inductor is zero. So that means that it doesn't have any initial current. So it, it's asking me to find d square i by dt square. So how can we do this? any 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 idea uh renesa so what are we given over here we are given um a uh, a circuit rl circuit in which the switch is closed at t equals to 0 and before that the current through the inductor is zero right so it's saying we need to determine the second order uh, differentiation of i with respect to t at t equals to 0 uh, just after the switch being closed that is 0 plus so let's uh, write the equation kvl in this loop apply kvl so what would it be it would be 15 minus 5 I T minus n d I T by d t. Is it correct? Okay. Now take this equation. Just one. Differentiate it again. Now, uh, if we differentiate it again, what would be the resulting equation? Since fifteen is a constant, it would be zero. So five d i t by d t minus ten d two i t by d t equals to zero, right? Therefore, d two i t by d t is given by minus five by ten. d i t by d t now at t equals to 0 plus we are required to find right d square i 0 plus d t square sorry square is equals to minus 0.5 d i 0 plus by d t now now take this equation again from 1 We know fifteen minus five i t is equals to minus ten d i t by d t is equal to zero, right? One more thing, since uh, an inductor doesn't allow abrupt change in the current flow of current, so what would what would it be? It would be before the current it was zero, right? Before the switch was closed, it was zero. So just after the switch was closed, it would be zero, right? Because it won't allow abrupt change in current, right, Renesa? So therefore, 
एन डी आई बाई डी टी जीरो प्लस इज नथिंग बट फिफ्टीन राइट सो डी आई बाई डी टी जीरो प्लस इज वन पॉइंट फाइव This is third. Let's call it second. So equate three into what do we get? We get minus zero point seven five. Right? D square i zero plus by d t square is equals to minus zero point seven five in pair per second square. So did you follow, Renessa? This question. Answer is B. Yes, I'm done. Great. So let's let's solve this question. Okay. So how can we solve this? so what is it saying it's saying that um, there is a switch connecting uh, the capacitor from ground to that 3 volt uh, source via a 120 ohm resistance right so uh, before um, before the switch was closed at t equals to 0 it was grounded right so the volt it was uncharged because since it was grounded v vct is nothing but zero right so now after it was uh, uh, switched to charging it's asking us that how much power did 3 volt supply to charge the capacitor from 0 to 3 so how can we solve this renessa we need to find energy that was taken from the 3 volt source to charge the capacitor the 0.1 microfarad capacitor from 0 volt to 3 volt so how can we solve this question so we'll first find current uh that is flowing through that uh capacitor right will we find the current we need to find the power that is supplied by the 3 volt source right so it's nothing but vt into it vt we know it's a constant voltage source so it's 3 we need to find it in order to solve this question so how can we find it mm-hmm. so you got the question right so it's asking us to find the power that is being supplied by the 3 volt circuit uh, 3 volt uh, source to charge the um uh, to charge the uh, capacitor from 0 to 3 volts so uh, for that we need to find the current passing through that uh, the current that it's supplying so the current would be what so this is the current flowing it and the same current is being flown through that uh, capacitor to right so let's uh, do one thing let's uh, let's write nodal equation across this node this b node so what would it be let's call this um, um uh, voltage p since it's directly connected across the uh, capacitor let's call its voltage as vct so applying it's not visible right applying kcl at node b so what would it be vct minus 3 by 120 plus what is ict 
current through the capacitor? Q equals to CV, right? So it's I, uh, so I is nothing but C dV by dt, right? So the current, okay. So you, you know, right? I just recently, so I just taught you that current through a capacitor yeah, is... So I... So from there it is coming. So I is equal to I is equal to C dV by dt. No. Okay. Let's let's see. So let's draw the circuit. You must not be getting it without. So after it's connected across that switch, how how does the circuit look? It looks there is a three volt source with a one twenty ohms resistance, and here is that. So I just see. right. So I took this node D and I'm calculating and I'm just applying the nodal analysis. So one uh, one equation would be simply V B minus this V B V B minus three by one twenty, right? This current equation is V B minus three by one twenty. Now the current through the capacitor, because this is the current flowing through the capacitor, what would it be? It would be simply C dVc by dt, right? Is it confusing? Let me know. I, I really want to um, um, solve it out. So um, let me know how is this confusing so that I can um, tell you. So we have an RC circuit, which is connected across a three volt source. And uh, what, what I just did, I just took the point B, applied KCL around it, and I'm just equating it to zero. Uh, and I'm just applying KCL. And I'm trying to find the uh, the voltage across the capacitor, this voltage, Vc. This is my main um, motto, that I want to find the voltage across Vc, uh, sorry, capacitor. And VB is nothing but VB is equals to VC, right? It's the capacitor voltage only because it's appearing directly across the VB. There is no other connection. Did you understand? Just give me a yes or a no so that I can proceed further. Applying KCL at B. So I1 plus I2 is equal to zero, right? There are only two currents emanating from B and no current coming uh, into that B node. So what is I1? I1 is VC minus three by 120. And I2 is the current flowing through the capacitor, which is C D V C T by dt so let's rewrite the equation it would be d v c t upon v c t minus 3 is equals to minus minus dt upon 120 c is it correct This is correct, right? So if I uh, integrate both sides, so it would be nothing but ln Vc t minus three minus some constant a minus t upon 120 c, which implies Vc t minus three is equals to a e minus t by 120 c. So did you understand this uh, integration, Vanessa? So integration of uh, uh, 
um, integration of one upon VCT is uh, VCT minus three is nothing but natural log of that, right? Yes, I know. Okay, I'll move. So, so at t equal to zero, we know the capacitor was uncharged. Therefore, we see zero is zero. Therefore, equating it in one, we got, therefore, A is minus three. Which means VCT is nothing but 3 1 minus e raised to power minus t by 120c. Right? So we got VC. Now we need to find IT. So this IT current is nothing but right. So let's differentiate it now. So our main goal was to find this ICT current. So we uh, so for ICT we required VCT, and we found out VCT to be nothing but three one minus e raised to power minus t by one twenty c, where one twenty c is the time constant, and now we are trying to find the IT by differentiating VC. So what is it? It comes out to be three c. Differentiation of this is zero minus. 1 upon 120c e raised to power minus t by 120c. So the so this is the current that's flowing in the circuit, right? So now can we find PT? Can we find PT now? We can, right? Vanessa, do you have any doubt up until this point? I hope not, right? So let's go. Hmm. Okay, so PT is what? The IT. So energy is nothing but integration of This from zero to T three three by forty e to the power minus three by one twenty C G T. So can you uh, tell me what is what what exactly will be this integral? Quickly. Yeah, tell me, Ram Kishore. So the answer is going to be a zero point. Three point. Uh, can it come again? Okay, so minus t by one twenty c and one upon minus one twenty c. So it's nothing but three c by fifteen to one twenty minus e minus t by one twenty c. So this is nine C zero point nine. Yeah. 
so as t tends to infinity voltage will reach 3 volt right so energy comes out to be 9c which is 0.9 joules very good so if you are solving this let me know and i if you if i don't hear your voice i feel like there's no one solving okay so the answer is 0.9 joules very good let's move on to another question so you find similar questions in your um okay unit impulse response i didn't go to similarity Sir, functions the end of the class i want to take some uh, uh, i want to make a decision regarding sorry giving your suggestion uh, um okay 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 before the end of the class i uh, i'll let you uh, ask your uh, whatever you want to ask for suggestion or um but uh, let's first solve these questions right so i before solving the next question i want to discuss singularity functions so can anyone tell me what are singularity functions anyone So singularity functions are those functions. Yes, I am giving an example. Suppose it is sine z by sine z plus cos z. So we will make the denominator zero, which is sine z plus sine z minus cos z is equal to zero. So sine z by cos z is equal to one. So it will be tan z. Okay, okay, but uh, but uh, okay. Uh, I couldn't quite get you, but. Uh, i hope you know the answer so, so these are those functions that uh, that are either discontinuous right or uh, or, or, or they have discontinuous derivatives what does it mean by this this means that these functions have singular points what are singular points singular points are those points at which derivative is not defined so we will look at some few uh, questions where you will know how how uh, how i came to this um, definition so there are many um, singular functions you you may come across uh, but uh, we'll go through only three main um, uh, singular functions one is a unit step function so what is a unit step function so it is a function in which it's a step function right let's see this this is a step function so what how we can write we can say that u of t is 0 for t less than equal to 0 and 1 for t greater than 0 right and since it has a discontinuity at t equals to 0 where um we can't define a derivative it's called a singular point and that's why it's a singular singularity function okay so there's one more function it, it's called impulse function so in impulse function So it's nothing but a point at which hmm. a point at which there is an undefined um, uh, value occurring, right? So let's say this is some point T naught, right? So an impulse function is generally denoted by delta and it's also called a delta function. So it's zero for t less than t naught. It's also zero for t greater than t naught. But at t equals to t naught, it's undefined. Right? And uh, 
the differentiation of unit step function is a delta function or an impulse function because if you will differentiate with at this singular point there is an undefined value as i said um there's one more class it's called ramp function so what is a ramp function ramp function of those functions which increase or decrease they can be both at a constant rate right so this is a ramp function it's denoted by rt so it's 0 for t less than 0 and it's t for t greater than or equal to 0 let's say some t right so though these three functions are singularity functions and uh, and we'll uh, we'll discuss about uh, and and these are very important in signal systems and analysis because uh, these are used to delay decay or uh, you know, increase of function uh, when needed in your circuits right as we'll see in the next example so let's see this question so it's saying a unit impulse response a, a unit imp impulse response of a network some network is there, let's say some network, and it applied a delta function across this. And it's saying the response that it received, response across this network was what? E raised to power minus alpha t. Now it's saying what is the its unit step response? So uh, Renessa, how can we find the unit step response? As I told you earlier, uh, delta function or an impulse function is nothing but the differentiation of that uh, unit step function, right? So what would be the, um, uh, for uh, for impulse function, what would be the uh, unit step function? It would be in the integration of it, right? So delta t, the response is given by E minus alpha t. Let's say from some, we, have, we are not given any, uh, so let's say minus t to t. So at only one point, t naught point, there will be a, 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 an impulse, right? So u of t naught, which is nothing but minus t to t naught, it would be zero. And from zero to t naught, it would be zero. At only t naught, it would be one upon minus alpha e raised to power minus alpha t naught, right? So what is the answer? The answer is C. So did you understand Renessa? Any questions? Great. Hmm. Let's move across another question. So let's solve this question. And so can you can you solve it for me? Okay. Can you? Uh, so uh, what exactly is this uh, this um, uh, problem saying that we are applying a square pulse which is of uh, four volts um, amplitude and only for two seconds across an RC combination circuit. We need to find the voltage across the resistor. So can you tell me between zero to two second? when will the capacitor achieve its steady state so i told you before when does the capacitor reach its steady state so i told you right at five time constants the capacitor reaches its steady state, right? The voltage across the capacitor reaches its steady state. Or if the voltage is reaching its steady the capacitor reaches steady state. So what is the five time constant here? 
quickly calculate for me five tau. So as you can see, solving these questions are not difficult and we are not taking that much amount of time that we did before, like for the previous five assignments, because these, uh, these questions are straightforward. So can you quickly tell me what is the five value of the five time constant? So the value comes out to be 5 into 10 raised to power minus 4 seconds. That means at t equals to 2 seconds, the capacitor would have reached its steady state. Am I correct? Therefore, capacitor is at steady state. Equals to two seconds, right? So, if a capacitor has reached its steady state, what does that mean? While charging, the voltage will reach at which value? So what would happen? Uh, zero point zero six. No, 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 no. no. Uh, that's for discharging. It's charging right now, right? It's a charging circuit. There is a 4 volt uh, DC source connected across uh, 4 volt till 2 second it's a DC source right it's not changing anything so it's connected across that 0.1 microfarad and uh, resistance combination right so while charging it's reaching at its steady state voltage that means it's becoming an open circuit right because the value of voltage is not changing so if the value of voltage is not changing the current through it would be zero so that means the uh, the the voltage across the capacitor would be uh, so sorry the current through the capacitor would be zero that means it would become an open circuit right so i is what c d v c by d t so while charging it's reaching at its steady state right it's it's reaching at its steady state once it reaches at its steady state, the voltage becomes constant. If that means, if you equate it here, ICT would be zero. So that means the capacitor behaves like an open circuit. So if we redraw, redraw the circuit, it would become something like this. Right. And we know VC for 2 minus is equals to Vc at 2 plus, right? Renessa, I need a yes or a no. I mean, I need to know if you're following. Okay. Okay. So at t equals to zero, then that means no current is flowing in the circuit. Okay. Uh, sorry, at t equals to two, the voltage here becomes zero. This is an open circuit. No current is flowing. I is zero. So that means in the direction of uh, voltage here is given minus and plus, right? But we know when a capacitor charges, across a DC voltage, 
this is plus and this is minus. So VCP is equals to VDC. Here, the value of what the value of um, voltage would be minus four, right? Because the polarities are reversed. They are showing it as minus and plus. Just keep this in mind when you're the solving this question. Four, four. The answer would be minus four, right? Plus four. Minus four. This is my plus and minus. If you do it this way, minus four minus V naught is equals to zero. V naught is minus four. Right? Had the polarities been this plus and minus, this would have been plus four. The polarities are like this. I mean, you can, I just want you to take a look at this polarity because it's important. So that means the, this would be minus. And if you would do it like this, the V naught will come as minus four. So the answer is minus four. So did you follow this question? So you can see these questions don't uh, have too much calculation. These are intuitive questions. So you need to understand the intuition behind uh, behind this question, how to solve these. Then only you will be able to solve these kind of questions. Even if you would have kept it plus and minus, this would have been four, right? So this would be four minus four minus V naught equals to zero and V naught would have been minus four. But since the polarity given in the question, I'm taking that into account. Great. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, so we are given a circuit over here and it's saying that the circuit has reached a steady state before time equals to zero equals to zero and then five ohm this resistance suddenly burns out that means the circuit becomes open circuited the current i at t equals to zero plus since we know the voltage across the resistors can't change abruptly so vc vc zero plus is equal to vc zero minus right so let's uh, so that means since it's in steady state it was open circuited before so let's redraw the circuit the circuit was something like this. The capacitors are open circuited. This one resistance, 2.5, 2.5. This is also open circuited. Plus minus V C one plus minus V C two, and there's this resistance that's connected five ohm. At steady state, what is the value of I? So as can be seen, this two point five is open circuited. No current will flow over here. It would be two point five five and one point five in series, right? So I would be eighteen upon. 1.5, 2.5, and 5, which is 9. So the current is 2 amperes. So that means 2 ampere current was flowing in the circuit at steady state. So now, since this circuit is at steady state, let's calculate these value of VC1 and VC2. So what is the value of VC1? VC1 is nothing but 2.5 into 2, the voltage across this 2.5 ohm resistance, which is 5 volt. And VC2 is what? The voltage across this, this 5 ohm resistance, which is 5 into 2, 10 volt. So at steady state, we got the values of VC1 and VC2. Now it's saying at T equals to 0 plus, uh, at t equals to zero, the uh, circuit for the five ohm resistance blows up. So let's try at t equals to zero. Redraw the circuit. E. Plus minus. I should have copied that.
So you're following Renesa? So now at t equals to zero, five ohm burns out. So that means there is an open circuit here as well. So now it's saying that uh, since this is an open circuit, the circuit is no more in steady state. Now the values of voltages across the VC1 and VC2 will change. But since at since we know VC1 at zero negative is equals to VC1 at zero plus. Similarly, VC2 is zero negative is equals to VC2 at zero plus. Just before and after that, uh, uh, the five ohm uh, resistance blowing out, the value of voltages is same because it uh, it doesn't it opposes it it does not allow abrupt changes in the voltage. So now we can easily calculate the value of uh, current, right? We need to find the value of I, this I. That's what's required, right? This I we need to find out. So plus minus, let's say the current is going to plus minus, right? Hmm. Since the circuit is open circuited, let's calculate this current only. So the current will go from here to here too. So let's take, uh, let's apply KVL around this loop. It's nothing but I into 2.5 plus the same current will flow I into 2.5 ohm minus VC1 equals to zero. Therefore, I5 is equals to VC1, which is equals to 5 volt. So that means I is nothing but 1 ampere. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So the answer is 1 ampere, right? So are you following, Renessa? So did you follow this question? Any doubts? YouTube video and watch this. Uh, just a second. What did you say? I will watch uh, the YouTube video. Okay. So I did a mistake over here. This would be minus, minus, and then minus VC1, right? Uh, you didn't tell. Okay. So that, that's why I wanted you to solve with me. So I would come out to be minus 1. Minus 1 ampere. Since if you do KCL, that this would be minus I into 2.5, minus I into 2.5, and then minus VC1. Just remember. So I would be minus one ampere. Great. Let's move on to one more question. Hmm. So uh, Renessa, let's let's solve this question together. So I want you to solve it. So it's showing that this is a waveform of current that is applied across a resistance of one ohm, and we have to calculate the energy absorbed by that uh, resistance. So how will you? Uh, so how will we find it? So we know E T is what E T into dt I T into uh, dt is power so we'll be integrating into uh, zero add from two to uh, from whatever the... okay 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 let's just a second just a second just a second yes so um vt is what can you tell me what is vt for a one ohm resistance what is vt i t into r t and r is one right so vt is nothing but i t R is 1. So PT is what? I square, right? Uh, v square by R. Or I square T, right? V square by R or V square is I square T and R is 1. So it's I square T, right? Now, um, so the equation of uh, current between this VIT, region. VIT is also there. VIT. Huh, weird. So what is the um, equation of current uh, for these two functions? Can you tell me for this first, for the red shaded part? What is the equation of current?
so it's reaching six ampere at two seconds that means the slope is three so the equation is three t right so, so we'll be putting it to the power y is equal to uh, mx plus c uh, so uh, Hmm. Y is equals to m x plus c since c is zero and uh, the and m is given by six upon two which is three right so it's nothing but no, m is equal to three t three t yeah three t and the equation of uh, um, current here is just simply six ampere right so let's write the equation again it would be e t is nothing but zero to four i square so from zero to two, it's nothing but three t squared t t, and from two to four, it's six square d t. So can you quickly solve this um, integral? It's definite integral, right? You will be able to find. It. Let me know if you're not doing so that I'll do. No, I am doing. I am doing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That is a uh, two 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 four integral. Uh, what dt, sir? It's six square dt, right? This is six square. So this is zero to nine. It will be twenty four plus thirty six into two. Twenty four plus thirty six into two. So what is it? Seventy two plus twenty four, right? So it would be ninety six joules. You are saying. Yeah, the answer is ninety six joules. Yes, you are correct. So it would be dt. So that means this is nothing but t q by three from zero to two plus thirty six t from two to four. This comes out to be three into eight plus thirty six into four minus two, which is seventy. No, sorry, ninety six joules. Very good. Let's do one more. Well, eleven, ten, nine. Yeah. So it's saying with a similar waveform of the current as shown in figure eight. That means this figure. It now passes through an inductance of two h instead of that resistance. Determine the amount of energy absorbed by the inductance in the first four seconds. So how will we solve this question, Renisa? So P T not will not change to what? No energy will be a half l i square. Sir, your sound is not coming for some reason. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, now you're audible, but the entire thing you went are not audible. Okay, so I repeat it again. So um, I don't know what happened. My thoughts are working. So yeah, so where was I? So 
so uh, where from where did the uh, voice started breaking so can you let me know so that i can repeat so this was clear right 96 joules how it came yes 96 joules was clear but after that not okay so now we have a new question it's saying that uh, instead of that resistance one ohm resistance there is a two henry inductance now and we are required to find the energy uh, absorbed by that uh, uh, inductance in the first four seconds so we know et is what integration of n by by dt or matlab vv of t into i l dy yeah now vl is nothing but l di by dt right now can you tell me uh, for that waveform let's draw it on the same loop let's draw current through green and voltage through red so the current is given something like this right so can you tell me what would be the uh, waveform of voltage the waveform of voltage uh, so what is di by dt it's the slope of that um the waveform right it's just the slope of that waveform so vl would be let's say this is 6 right so in on the same uh, um similar um let's uh, so what would be the um, um there was a uh, yeah the yeah the slope of the uh, the volt induct uh, this current is nothing but 3 right so we would start from it's not on the same axis just assume that uh, it's a different axis in the 6 by 2 6 by 2 yeah. 6 by 2 it's, it's not being drawn to scale right so just just see that the values are i'm just not taking the similar scale it's not the similar scale just don't assume that it's the similar scale so it's constant right uh, because it's an increasing function but after that it becomes uh, steady uh, it becomes constant so that means the uh, differentiation of that part would be nothing but zero so now tell me where will the inductance store energy from which region it will store only from 0 to 2 no 2 to 4 uh, voltage is zero right so if voltage is zero uh, that means there's no uh, energy being absorbed by the inductor it's only absorbing between 0 to 2 right voltage is zero is this is this uh, graph clear to you Nessa, is this graph clear to you? So L D I by D T is what slope of that waveform, right? Slope of uh, 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 an increasing function is nothing but the slope of that function. So slope is three. But uh, after it becomes constant, if we differentiate a constant, it's zero, right? So let's let's write the okay, whole. Okay, so it's partial from zero to two, right? Yeah. So we can write V T is nothing but. Three into I T is sixty into D T, right? Plus from two to four, this is zero into thirty six D T. Now quickly tell me the answer of energy absorbed by the inductor between zero to two. Thirty six. No, no, no. Wait, wait. The last one will be zero. Just a minute, just. Seventy two, seventy two, seventy two, thirty six, thirty six, thirty six. Okay. 
yeah you were asking something so you wanted to discuss something before the end of the lecture so should we discuss one more question or do you want to discuss it now no uh, that, that doubt will be cleared next week okay okay so there is let's do one more question so it's showing that in this circuit uh we the voltages vc2 vc3 under steady state we need to find the voltages vc2 and vc3 under steady state conditions respectively so that means the whole circuit is under steady state so the capacitors will become open circuited right it's open circuit then so can you tell me what is the value of i under steady state it will be from uh, by comes to be 100 upon 10 plus 40 right this is open circuited so no current flows through 24 ohm resistance and the only current that's flowing is from it will be answer 3 how do you know Hundred upon. So, how did you solve it so fast? To ampere. So, we know applying KVL across this loop, it would be VC one minus VC two minus VC three equal to zero, right? Because everything is open circuit. There is no current flowing. So, VC one is equals to VC two plus VC three. Now, what is the value of VC one? VC one is two into forty. Current is flowing two ampere, and the value of resistance is forty. That means eighty volt. So we know VC two plus VC three is eighty volts, right? So that em eliminates A and D. Now we need to find what is the answer. Uh, so now we need to find VC two and VC three. So how will we do it? We know uh, when Q is equals to CV, V is equals to Q upon C, right? So the uh, voltage, uh, so so the uh, amount of uh, uh, where was I? Yeah. So the amount of uh, voltage across the two capacitor is inversely proportional to the uh, capacitance of that capacitor, right? So that since V C two is less than V C three, uh, sorry, since C two is less than C three, V C two will be more than V C three. That means the answer is B. It's not C. Renessa, answer would be B. You told it C. so any doubts in this class renas sir did you understand this question you 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 just told me the answer is c so can you tell me how did you come across c you simply saw vc1 is nothing but 40 into 280 so you just did 32 plus 48 is 80 right but there's two different uh, parts where the uh, voltage would come out to be 80 volts so So, do you have any uh, questions, Renessa? Desik, any question? Okay, Desik, any question? Okay, so in this class, we went through um, uh, two more circuit elements called capacitors and inductances. Uh, sorry, capacitors and inductors. we tried for uh, we we got to know what what exactly is capacitor and how it shows stores energy and we also stayed to a look at what are the different uh, connections that are possible with the capacitor the series and the parallel connection and what are the equivalent capacitances across it 
then we went into inductors and then we tried to um, uh, try to learn what are the different kinds of induct inductors and what is the working principle behind it and then we went and then we saw first order circuits which are those circuits when we have been applied with the kirchhoff's laws produce first order circuit uh, first order differential equations then we saw an rc circuit and an rl circuit then uh, we solved some sample problems based on rc and rl circuit we also took a look at singularity functions so we discussed three singularity functions in this class unit step function impulse function and ram functions and we solved sample problems uh, for that um, for these concepts so any closing suggestions any closing feedback so we'll close this class soon so any feedback any suggestions Renessa. So you understood everything, right? No, I will be seeing the YouTube video and the lectures once. Okay. So if you have any doubts, you can always post it in the comment box of that YouTube video, right? So I can, I can take a look at it and then I can solve it for you. Okay. So uh, I'm closing this class. Thank you so very you much for being here. You have given a mail ID also. So we can... Mail you on that mail ID. Um, you okay? While I'll appreciate you writing it down at uh, uh YouTube comment box, but if you really want to email me, here's my email ID. Um, okay, so um, let's uh, close this class. So, so I have to ask you to leave. So.